Hey guys, in this video, we'll be discussing the problem minimize the total price from a uh, weekly contest 341 of lead code. The problem states that there exists an undirected and unrooted tree with n nodes, and the way they have actually mentioned the tree is pretty trivial. So, we, uh, they have mentioned that there are n nodes and the edges uh, i represents ai to bi. So, these are the trivial stuff, or the way generally you get the input of a tree. So, not discussing that. After that, they say that there is an integer array price where price i is the price of the ith node. That's also understandable. And then they say that uh, they are also uh, you are also given with a 2D vector array, a 2D array trips where trips i is equal to start comma end. So it defines a trip i uh, basically means that you will be going from the node start to the node end. Now since we know that there is only one way of going from a, any node to another node in a particular tree, so this path is definitely going to be distinct, right? Or there is only one way to perform this particular uh, path, and uh, what they want us to do is that before you start performing these uh, trips itself, the score of any trip would be the sum of the nodes that you travel in that particular trip. Now, since we know that this is the thing that, uh, so wh wh what do we need to do in this particular problem is that before starting all of these trips, you can select a few nodes that cannot be adjacent, right? So nodes have to be non-adjacent and you can slash their value by half. So you can say that okay for this particular node that is having a value 2 i uh, like that is having a value 10 i'll make it 5 for this particular node that is having a value 1 i'll make it uh, that is having a value 2 i'll make it 1 for this node having a value 6 i'll make it 3 so these are the things that you can already perform on this tree now what you can do is okay over here yeah so after this so they say that okay the trips you're gonna take is uh, 0 to 3 2 to 1 and 2 to 3 so now now you'll say after performing these operations these are the final values of the nodes i'm having so you will perform this particular trips so it will be like uh going from one uh, going from the node 0 to the node 3 would actually cost you 1 plus 2 plus 3 right so it costs you six units and uh, the next uh, next traversal is actually from the node 2 to node 1 so it's co it costs you 5 plus 2 that is 7 right now how would we do it now one could argue that it's actually pretty simple we can uh, like construct a tree and for each of the nodes we can actually uh, we actually have just two possibilities for each of the node we'll either slash its value by half or we'll keep it as it is right obviously it would depend on the value of the parent as it, uh, also as it is yeah it would depend on the value of the parent if it has been slashed by half then we cannot perform this uh, operation for the uh, current node but you can say that it, uh, it actually asymptotic to order of 2 power n, right? Cool. But the problem over here is that given the constraints where n is less than equal to 50, if you go for a logic that is 2 to power 50, that is approximately around 10 to power 15 operations, right? So 10 to power 15 operations would definitely give you a TLE. Now we need to reduce it further. So how would we reduce it? So definitely DP can come to the, uh, come over here and help us out. But how do we even apply DP because for, uh, we are not given with the uh, like what is the contribution of each of the node, right? So we just know that there are some traversals that need to be performed. But we don't know how many node, how uh, which node would be appearing how many times. So how would we apply DP even over here? The very first thing is let's get rid of the uh, for this uh, trips array. Rather, let's say that I already know that which node is going to appear how many number of times. Or I can say what would be the contribution of every node. For that, what I need to do? For that, what I can say is, firstly, I'll construct the tree from the inputs they've given me or from the edges they've given me. After that, I'll perform each of this uh, operation or each of this uh, uh, trip and I'll calculate that which node is appearing how many number of times and I'll store it. And let's say I call it the contribution of each node to my, towards my final answer. For example, I'll, go, I'll be going from 0 to 3 and I'll see that 0, 1 and 3 other nodes that are appearing this particular path. So I'll say, okay, the contribution of zero is one, the contribution of one is one and the contribution of three is one. Now I'll be going from two to one. So this is two and this is one. So I'll be saying, I'll be saying that, okay, contribution of two is one. However, now the contribution of one would become two because contribution of one was earlier also one itself in the first trip, right? So that would, uh, that's something I would be performing. Since the code is a bit long, let me break it to chunks and let me explain you the uh, individual components. So firstly, we are making this contribution array. So this is how we are doing it. So that's a, that's a pretty standard way I'll say or pretty easy thing to do. So for all the trips, right, all T in trips, I'm going for every, uh, like every trip, this is the starting point. Okay, so I'm, I've mentioned uh, the starting point, that is the current node, right, and the ending point. 
so end is mentioned over here then i've given in the graph and the parent and the contribution array that needs to be manipulated also we are mentioning a current now what is this current vector so current vector basically means in the current trip what are the nodes that you are processed right so that you would require to update the value of the contribution right so that's what you're gonna do we are gonna check that if you have reached the last node that means your uh, entire traversal has been valid if that's the case that we are gonna increase the contribution of all the nodes that are available in this current vector cool uh if that's not the case if, if it's not the last node then you try, uh, try for all the possibilities right so the, we are trying for that now comes the important question so till this point we already know the contribution okay contribution of each node is known right now what do we need to do now we can say that okay, i'm gonna apply a dfs traversal and i'm gonna calculate the two possibilities that there's one possibility that the node may, may be included and the other possibility is that the node uh, might not be included uh, in having in the having process so how do I do that? So I can do it, it do that trivially as well, but that is gonna give me order of two to power n complexity. So how do I reduce that further? So for that, I know that the inclusion or the exclusion of a node in this halving process would depend on its parent, right? So what I can say is that for any node x, right, it has two possibilities of being included or of being excluded, right? And these possibilities actually depend on its parent. So irrespective of the value of the parent, excluded can al always be true. So I can always say that I'm gonna not, I'm not gonna halve this node. However, included can only be the case if its parent has not been halved, right? So that is something I can uh, define in the state. So when I'm going for a DFS traversal, and let's say th uh, this is the node, over here I can also mention that its parent was halved or not. So there could be two possibilities, or let's call it, previous was set or previous of halved, whatever you want to call it, right? And then over here, we can check that if I've already computed, so if, I, uh, if I've already computed and memoized the answer for node or node, given its parent was halved, previous was halved or set, right? If I've computed this, then I can return this value directly. If I haven't computed this, then I'll have to compute this. Now, how would I compute this? So there would be two scenarios. So one of the scenarios is where the, uh, where the previous value is set, right? So over here, I'll only go about checking uh, what would happen if I don't set this value, right? Do not set this value. Well, however, in the other case, wherein the previous is not set, right? If the previous is not set, in that case, I have two options. So one of the option is right over here. So this option is always val is always valid. The second option I'll be having is set this node. So that's what we are gonna do. I always try to uh, do this uh, the, these kind of questions or questions which actually depend on a recursive approach by top-down DP because it's always more uh, understandable as and easy to explain. It might be a bit longer to code, but it's easier to explain and more intuitive. So over here, that's exactly what I'm doing. So I've made two variables, rest one and rest two. Rest one is the answer or the contribution of this particular node, considering I'm gonna halve it. So if I'm gonna halve it, then basically I have to divide it by two. And uh, the contribution it will be making in total would actually be uh, what number of times this node was appearing in all the traversals. So that we, have, we had already con compu uh, computed in this particular function, right? We'll multiply it by the price of the node and divide it by two. Result two is uh, considering that we are not considering this particular node in the halving process. So that would be simply contrary of this node multiplied the price of the node. Right? Then I'll say that if I've already computed it, so if my DP value is not equal to minus one, that minus one is my dummy value or the uh, starting value I've provided for each of these numbers. So if it's not minus one, in that case, I can return it. Else, firstly, I'll try that what would be the answer in case I'm not halving it, right? So over here, I'll say that, okay, perform all uh, the DFS operation for all the childs, which are not the parent. And in this case, set the value of previous set as false. So I'm saying the value is zero, right? And now I'll check that if the previous was set, in that case, it doesn't even make sense. I cannot even set the current variable, right? So in that case, I'll just return uh, rest two. However, if the previous variable was not set, in that case, I can set the current variable and I'll also have to calculate rest one, right? So I'll calculate rest one over here 
and i'll say that okay i'm going to make a dfs call and i'm going to tell my children that the current value of the parent is set at the end i'm going to return of uh, return the minimum of these two rest one or rest two right so yeah that's it for the question i hope you understand the solution if still you have any sorts of doubt let me know cool guys thank you bye bye